But trust me, y'all, if I ever get caught stealing, it won't be from Walmart. Amen. Amen. I'm going to get caught out there in some place like Tiffany. Just let you know. How are we doing tonight? Blessed? And I'm excited to be in the house of the Lord because I've had nothing but trial. But that's all right because i got a testimony. Amen? Amen. And Sister Shannon, awesome, awesome worship. Awesome. Thank you so much. Amen. 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 Let's turn our Bibles to Matthew 5 and 11. We're going to read this together before we proceed. And we're continuing with... Um, Defending our faith. Uh, our theme for the month is defend your faith. And sometimes when we think about defending our faith, is that we always got to go around and tell people about our Lord and Savior. That's not a defense of faith. That's being defensive in our faith. Amen? So, prayerfully, we're going to be able to get lessons tonight. We're going to get scripture and we're going to read our Bibles tonight. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Not like you have a choice. But go along with me. Amen? Amen. So, we're in the book of Matthew, chapter 5. Verse 11 and 12, we're going to read also. Let's do this together in the name of Jesus. Amen. It says, Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you. For in my sake, verse 12 says, Rejoice. For great is your reward in heaven. Hallelujah. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Regardless of what we go through in our Christian journey, somebody was fighting this fight before we started fighting, amen? We just basically got here. You've been saved for 35, 50 years, it doesn't matter. You basically just got here, amen? But you know, it doesn't matter what fight you fought yesterday. The idea is that you have to fight today. Because your faith doesn't run out, regardless. You may run out of faith, but your faith should not run out, amen? So let's bow our heads. Matter of fact, let's reverence the Lord. Let's stand on our feet. Let's connect with someone and be in agreement tonight, amen? Hallelujah. Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you tonight, Lord, for being the God of our lives. And Father, for every test and trial, we thank you for the testimony. Hallelujah. Father, I ask that you anoint the hearers tonight, Lord God. Anoint their hearts and their minds, their ears to hear your word tonight, Lord God. And anoint the speaker. Hallelujah. You know, Lord, I've already spoken your word because you've already put it inside me, Lord. I thank you for what you're doing and what you've done, Lord. Hallelujah. But, Father, we ask for a special blessing tonight upon each and every one of us. And those that couldn't be here tonight, Lord God, we ask that you keep them just as you have with us. Father, my mouth, my mind, and my manners, I ask that they're in the proper place that you be glorified tonight in the name of Jesus. And we all agree and say amen. 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 Hallelujah. We're going to continue with the scripture in the book of Jude, uh, chapter 1. Turn your Bibles there because I want to continue on the same page. And if you were here last week, you really got blessed by Minister Sam King, who was here, who made a statement that kind of made me laugh and worried at the same time. And he said, you know, listen, you know this message. You know that you're a believer. You, you're here on Wednesday night, amen? And the truth is, I was kind of feeling like that when I was trying to get together a message because... I was like, you know, when the, a good word always comes from this pulpit. Come on, somebody. Amen. Come on, somebody. So for me, it was like, you know, how do you squeeze out more juice from the orange that's already been squeezed out, you know? And, and all you leave is a corner in the bottom of the cup, you know? So, you know, I'm going to go my style. Is that all right with y'all? So y'all going to get a little bit of the KLV if that's okay, because I really don't know who else to be tonight. Amen. So, you know, I, I thought about some things, and I was told that I'm not orthodox. So, you know, if I make you uncomfortable, then I'm just doing my job. Amen. So we're in the book of Job. I'm sorry, the book of Job, first chapter, verse 3. And it says, Beloved, when I, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you. Here we go. And exhort you that ye should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And when you think about something being earnest or contending, earnest is a serious intention. We want to always earnestly do something because the Word of God even tells us, that whatsoever you do, do it as heartily as unto the Lord. And when we're talking about something that deals with our Christian journey or in our Christian position, we want to be earnest about it. Amen? But even in the things that we're earnest about, sometimes when we contend, it's a struggle in our opposition. If, if the Christianity was so easy... Why do we have it so hard? If it was so pleasant to be a Christian, which, let's be honest, it should be, but some days it's not. And sometimes the fight and the battle is so like, you know, the, the, 
the 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 Muslims ain't got no problems. I mean, they think they do. <laughs> you know, the Buddhists don't have no problems. They just have to chant a couple of times, and then they don't. They think you know they're okay. And you know, all the other religions don't struggle like we do. And I was like, you know, why do we struggle so much? Well, one of the reasons why is because we have a Savior who struggled for us. See, it's very easy to do what he did because we didn't do it. And it looks like it's simple until we get the understanding of what he did. But it's difficult sometimes to even grasp understanding with that because we wouldn't sacrifice like he did. We think we would have because we're just so strong in our faith, but sometimes it gets tough. So, you know, it's hard for us to defend our faith when we're not sure. But that's okay because Jude writes to encourage whatever agonizing struggle that we go through, we're supposed to contend this thing together. And he says that when we do that together, it's not as hard as it should be. Our journey can be lonely, but it doesn't have to be that difficult because we're all in the same race. Amen? Are you in this race with me? Because, you know, because it's hard. And you get to places where you're like, where is he at? But you got to know he's always with you. Always. Amen? Yes. So, I, you know, I just wanted to just throw that in at that, in the name of the, in faith, that when we have this text that says we're in this together, it's for our salvation yes. and for our Christianity. Yes. Other religions want us to get together with them so they can be more powerful in number. We just need to be more powerful in spirit. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You've got a new person. Amen. That's all we need to do. Defend your faith and fight for the honor of your faith. That's in Titus 1 and 4. Common faith. Common faith or faith that we held in common. There's a lot of Christians that call themselves Christian, but they're not going through what you're going through because their faith isn't so strong. All they have to do is profess it. That doesn't mean they believe it. We have to believe what we say. So when we say what we said, other people can understand what was said so they can too believe what we said. And don't ask me to repeat that. Give and take, because I don't have it like that. I just don't. But we got to stick together and defend one another against the adversary. So turn your Bibles to Philippians 1 and 27. And the reason why it's important that we stick together is because regardless of where we are at in our journey, this one saved this amount of years, this one's talked for this amount of years, this one knows more, this is theologically sound. At the end of the day, you fight the same devil I'm fighting. You fight the same devil I'm fighting. Amen. And so you may not be fighting the same type of situations that I'm fighting in my life, but the truth is there's still one devil that's got an army of imps. Amen. And so if we're not going to be together in this, and I'm going to fight this battle by myself, then what do I need this journey or this relationship with Christians for? Mm -hmm. I need you, and I do. You need me. And we may not all be one big happy family. But we're still family. Amen. If you look at the family structure that you have now outside of this church, you still got one Uncle Ray Ray that still don't know how to hold his liquor. Amen. You got one cousin who don't know what to do with his money. You got one cousin that she just don't know how to stop having all them kids. We all got somebody in our family that we're not so proud of, but they're still our family. Right? Amen. <laughs> You know, I, I, love, I love my sisters. They're both very different. One of my sisters is like so off the wall sometimes I call her macadamia. And the sad thing about it, she will answer me when I say you're a nut. You're like a macadamia. But that's how it is. But let me find out you called her macadamia. Yeah, right? Couldn't be you. So we all have that situation with our family, but we're still fighting that same devil. And he is still after us. And if we don't bring this together, he's going to tear us apart. Amen? So in the book of Philippians 1 and 27, it says, Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit. Here's the bill. With one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel. Come on, somebody. Come on, that's it. I, re I remember when uh, we lived in New York and we just had Jordan and um, I wasn't saved then. And I knew about God, of course, because, you know, there are a hundred churches on one block. And um, I knew about Jesus because my mom was saved and I just had Jordan. And um, Jehovah Witnesses come by my house. And they came. Two by two. Two by two. 
you know, you know how they do. And you know, the Jehovah's Witnesses these days, they bring their own little refreshments because you don't need anybody feeding them anymore. And so I, you know, I was kind of messed up because I was like, you know, ding dong, you answer the door. I got Jordan, and of course they go straight for the baby. They want to hold her because that's their way of getting their foot inside my house. And being a new mother, I wasn't very wise. So I was like, you know, I didn't let them touch my daughter, but I wasn't going to say, what are you doing on my front step, you know? And they weren't dressed like Jehovah's Witnesses were. They weren't wearing the outfits like in the 70s. I think they updated themselves. And so, you know, I'm kind of dealing with them. And, you know, it's getting close to dinner time. And, you know, the way my mother raised me, you know, you, your hair had to be combed, you had to be fresh, your kid had to be bathed. Because when your husband came home, if you want to keep him, you need to make sure that you had everything tight. So when he got home, your house was right. Amen. 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 And so it still works. So, you know, here's the deal. So I, I didn't know what to do with these Jehovah Witnesses because I wasn't religious at all. So I, you know, I go, well, um, uh, uh, picture me stuttering and stammering. That's how much they have me, okay? <laughs> and I'm like, and I'm nervous and I don't know what to do because I don't know how to really, I don't know religion. So what did I do? I welcomed them back the next day. Because <laughs> I didn't know what to do. So they come back the next day. And now there's four of them. Wow. And I'm feeding them. Wow. <laughs> I, remember that, honey? I'm feeding them. I'm like, huh? I don't cook for you like that, but I'm cooking for all these Jehovah's Witnesses. You know what I'm saying? And, then, and, and see, here's the thing. It, it's so weird. I praise God for the Holy Spirit because you don't have to profess a whole bunch of stuff. If the Holy Spirit's got you, you're going to be all right because with everything that they were telling me, I still wasn't comfortable in here. So my mind was like, okay, I'm going to wrap around what you say, hey, brother. But I'm still a little bit upset because I don't know how to get these people out of my house. So what I, what I did was I lied. So much. And I said, uh, my husband will be home soon because, you know, he was working 9 to 5 then, but the truth was it was only 3 o'clock. And so y'all been here since 12. I got to get y'all out of here. So, you know, y'all got to go. The problem was, if I had a faith that could defend me and that I could defend, y'all would have been sitting at my kitchen table and I would have been preaching to y'all. Because see, when you know what you know about the God you serve, you just can't come up with somebody's circle and start talking to you want to talk to. You can't roll up in my house and start telling me about your stuff. And, and here's the thing. When you have a house that serves the Lord, it don't matter what they say. They, will, they either want to flee or they want to sit and listen to you because you go with the Spirit of God. But I didn't have a faith. I didn't have that. So, and, and, you know, God is so good because knowing my ignorance, he kept me through all that time. But now, you know, when they want to come, they, they bring in a whole army now because now I got more in me. You just can't say whatever you want. Here's the ticket. I didn't defend Jesus. I defended my faith. See, what we like to do is we like to defend Jesus like, you know, he needs our defense. He don't need our defense. We need his defense. Amen. So when we defend our faith, we have to go in the power and the spirit of the Holy Ghost knowing it doesn't matter what you say or do. I'm not going to change my mind from this place that he's put me in. So you don't understand. He's picked me up. He's turned me around. He's placed my feet on his side of the ground. You can't take that from me. That's the faith that I have. I want to defend that to you. When God gives you something, you want to fight for what he's given you because you never had it so good. But they go out two by two. And then they want to ring your doorbell. And then they want to keep knocking. Don't knock on my door if there's a doorbell there. That's what the doorbell's there for. I feel like I want to put a sign that says, don't knock, hit the doorbell. But I feel like this, if you're that dumb and I got to tell you that, I want you on my property anyway. So, you know, they come two by two. The Mormons come two by two. They have no problem coming to your house 17, 18, 19 years old telling you that you need to get saved. And they are born and bred to do that. They are firm, they know, and they're quick to tell you what you need to do with the rest of your life. They don't want to hear nothing about what you got going on because you're wrong and don't be a person of color because they just started letting you in. <laughs> My God is not prejudiced at all. If you were, you wouldn't let me in. They have no problem doing that. But what they do is you'll never find 
them by themselves. They're always connected to one another. They will always defend one another. If you ever have a moment to speak with any of these people I'm speaking about, what they'll do is they will let you answer, and if the other one gets chopped down too quick because you're strong in your faith, the other one kicks in. We don't do that. We need to, but we don't do that. And so when you think about these things where it says with one mind striving together for the faith of the gospel, the good news, that's when we come in together as one. We need to be that way. So when I get weak in my place, there's where your strength kicks in and helps me. Because I'm going to get weak. And so are you. And so we need each other. Amen? Amen. But I was reading and I was ex kind of excited because they strive to be one in, with one another. And Paul was really trying to make that work for them because it becomes a what they consider a contest. Where they really want to win. Y'all know I'm a y'all know my victory girl. They want to win this thing. And so in this book, when you read, you're blessed. Why? Because they're like shoulder to shoulder, hand to hand. You know, they're like feet to feet. They're like this little army that's victorious in what they're doing because they're fighting for the same thing, which is their faith. Yes. Yeah. Well, you know, it's like an athlete. How many athletes do you know play sports by themselves? Right. You might be on a tennis field, out, a tennis court out there, but you're not, you're playing with somebody. The ball got to come back eventually somehow. So when you're an athlete, you have to train. You have to get rest. You have to prepare yourself. You have to work hard. That's what we need to do with our faith. Amen. We have to prepare ourselves. We have to work hard for it. We have to build it. Amen? Amen. But I was thinking about how with the Mormons and the... And the Mormons... I, you know, my neighborhood is, is like blanketed, you know, and, you know, I some days I'm like, I just want to, everybody have a meeting and we all just come in and jack, you know what I'm saying? But with this particular religion, we need to know our apologetics. Because, saints, it makes no sense to tell people that you're a Christian and you don't know why you are. What sense does that make? You, you're wasting time. You, I'm a Christian because my mom was a Christian, which is true for me, straight up. And then my mom's like, that whole thing is generational, not blessing. You have to know for yourself. So when you know a little bit about being an apologist, what you're doing is you're being able to confirm why you believe what you believe. Because if you can't stand, stand firm in what you believe, then how are you going to defend your faith? You have nothing to give if that's the case. You'll be in a place where I'm just doing it because everybody else is doing it. He said, lift my hands, I'm going to lift my hands. He said, you know, touch your toes, I'm going to touch my toes. Then if I don't, he says, you're out. Is that the game we're playing in our Christianity? Right. We have to understand that when we defend our faith, we're doing something more powerful. And that's what we want because God has given us that power. We're, we're the religion, because to all the other people that were considered a religion, we're the only religion that has sacrifice. So if we don't exercise that, it's for naught. Amen? Let's continue and turn our Bibles to 1 Peter 3.15. Praise God. If you're there, please say, defend. Yeah. <clears throat> Praise God. And the word of God reads and says, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready to give an answer to every man that asketh you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. Now, because we're Christians, we have to have a reasonable apologetic, amen? Yeah. And you know, you're like, you know, Sister Kai, what does that mean? What's a reasonable apologetic. Well, your reasonable apologetic is your testimony and your example. Because telling someone that you're a Christian all day and fighting for your defense of Christ is not going to get you there. And I, I always think it's crazy when people do this at places at their workplace. Well, you know, they were talking about my God and I didn't appreciate it. So, you know, I felt like I had to say something because you don't talk about my God that way. Y'all agree? But it's okay for you to sit and listen to someone else talk about your Christian brother or sister that way. See, 
Jesus does not need any defense. He needs us to act like we love each other while he's looking, while he's not looking. Because you see, it's not right that you call yourself a Christian in front of non-Christians and you let them gossip and talk about backbite other people. So God is like, not for nothing, this is great. But you wasn't with me when I was carrying that cross. Matter of fact, nobody was running to that job. Let's talk about it, okay? Pontius, that Pontius Pilate was uh, Simon of Cyrene, brother. He was like, okay, I'll do it. But he wasn't running toward the job. No one's running to do that task. If Jesus were here today, he still might go, well, you guys, you got this, right? It may not be so easy for us to jump up and do something that's going to make us be sacrificial. So we have to defend each other in the faith. When your faith is low, I have to defend you and take up some of that slack. That's what he was talking about in the book of Philippians. We got to cover up. It's to help the other person out. So when you're weak or broken, I get to come in and give you some of what I got. I, let me tell you something. It's nice when somebody's hurting in their body and you tell them, well, read, read, hold on. How about you go get the word, you read it to me and minister to me for a minute. I don't know how to pick up the book and open it. We have to do more than what we're supposed to because that's what's expected of us because that's why he gave it to us in the first place. So defending the faith of one another is, I'm not going to let nobody just come against you. And you have to trust the God in your brother and sister that that doesn't happen. Because God's watching all of us. And that's a heartache. It will hurt your heart when he checks you on that. So we have to get to a place where it's like, when you're not in a good place, and your faith is starting to kind of waver and quiver, and, and you got nothing to give, I got to figure out how to help you. I don't have to be a minister. I don't have to be anybody special. I got to be a child of God. That's where I stand first. I'm the daughter of the Almighty King. I told y'all, call me Vicky for short. I'm going to be victorious in this. My brother told me that he doesn't matter what, God's got you. All I got to do is defend who I am in my Christianity. I don't have to defend Christ because he's got this. Amen? But when you're not good and when you're not strong and when you're broken and when you need a little more, I got to help you defend your faith. Amen? Amen. 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 I was um, thinking about the people that like to kind of go off about their God on their job. We got to use wisdom. <laughs> You can jack somebody about jacking your God, but don't do it on the workplace, at the workplace, on hour. Get your lunch hour. Take it, you know, at a certain time, because at the same time, you're doing it for one reason, to beat somebody down in the word. That's not even spiritual. You know how many people came against Jesus and he kept his mouth shut? Sometimes when you use your testimony to go before the God that you serve, you're so blossoming and so beautiful, God's looking at you saying, this is my son or daughter. I can't believe they kept their mouth shut when I know they wanted to go walk. It's okay, baby girl. You can say what you want when you get home. Keep your job. Amen. Keep yourself in a place Amen. where you're respectable and people will respect you because you don't have to snap every time somebody snaps about your God. Use wisdom. You're not defending him, you're defending your faith. And sometimes if you go with your faith, that whole situation will turn. See, here's what happens. You talk bad about somebody that's at your job because of your, your Jesus. You lose your job. Now you can't fix or change nothing. But you keep your mouth shut, you pray like you're supposed to, and you go in the order of the Holy Spirit, watch that person flip, and you get a tool in your prayer. So I want to take you to a story. I like my stories, that's how I learn. And we know the story, but we're going to go over it just in case somebody doesn't. Amen? Amen. And um, I won't keep you guys here long tonight, but I want to share the story. It's in the book of Daniel. So we're going to go to Daniel chapter 3. Verse 8. If you're there, say fiery. fiery. Hallelujah. In the book of Daniel, chapter 3, verse 8, it says, Wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. They spoke and said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. Thou, O king, has made a decree 
that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music with the K shall fall down and worship the golden image. Mm -hmm. Now, if you know anything about King Nebuchadnezzar, he was like a really evil king. He reigned like the longest of anybody. But he did have a soft spot in his heart for um, um, Daniel. But the point was, he was a really nasty guy, okay? And a gold lover. He would have made it really good in the 80s. And then it continues and it says, And whosoever falleth down and worshipeth, that he should be cast into the midst of the fiery furnace, the burning fiery furnace. Verse 12 says, There are certain Jews whom that, that has set over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and who guys? Amen. All right, y'all know them. These men, O king, have not regarded me. They serve not thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Huh. And then it continues and it says in verse 13, Then Nebuchadnezzar and his rage and fury commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Okay. Well, I, I just want to share the story and stop right here for a second because what I get a kick out of is these boys already knew the law. The civil law was to bow down to this golden image. But God's law was like, you don't bow down to no great image. So they were flat out, you know, we would call it rude, but they were disobedient, you know what I'm saying? They were like, listen, I know what you said, but this is what I'm going to do. <laughs> and even before they got to this place, they already had a plan of how they were going to handle that tactic. And so, you know, the king is finding out some stuff and he's kind of vexed about it. Verse 12 talks about what they did, and so pretty much it's like it's treason. They're gonna die. You can't, I can't be king. Listen, y'all. I can't be king. And then you come and I tell you what to do. And then you go, okay, and then you do what you're gonna do. And then it's like everybody's looking. <laughs> now, now the truth is, if they would have played it off, you know, and then, you know, when nobody was looking, did their thing, that might have gotten over. But you can't be flat out blatant. I'm not going to bow down. It's like everybody in this room is sitting and the one person in the middle is just standing. You just can't do that. <laughs> and if you did do that, that would, you would be considered out of order. Amen? Amen? So, you know, I was thinking, like, even in the book of Acts 5 and 29, it says, obey God rather than man. Amen. But here's the deal. It says, obey God rather. It does not say, obey God and disobey man. So we got to use wisdom. Amen? Amen? But, you know, so these three Hebrew boys are like, listen, you are raised up in this. You the king. We're going to vote with you because you like us and we're doing pretty well. But we're not going to bow down to your graven image. And they had good reason. 14 says, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, is this true? O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? And, you know, I kind of get a kick out of that because he's like, is that possible? <laughs> Could you really? Are you for real? Are you ain't for fake? Are you crazy? And, and you know, I like how he kind of gives them an option because he, he's kind of like, he's already, like, promoted them. But now that they're not doing what he wants, he's kind of like got an idea to demote them. And they're kind of like cooling the game with that because it's like, we already prepared this. But in my mind, I'm thinking... You know, it's like somebody's saying to you, how dare you? I mean, you, do you really get the, the gist of that? Like, if somebody says to you, how dare you? It's almost like you're here and, and well, hey, go with me, okay? Because, Deb, you got, you know how you, we do. Okay, so this me, this you, okay? And, and, and so, okay, wait a minute. Oh, yeah, okay, so this me, this is you. And so, you know, you do something to me, and I go, how dare you, right? Well, if we were here, how do I get to come up over here and go, how dare you? Like, it's already puffed up in pipes. It's like, you don't get to say to someone, baby, you don't get to do that. You don't get to say to somebody, how dare you, because that makes you be how dare her. Am I good? <laughs> okay, because I, you know, if it was math, I'd do better, but I'm just, I, you know. You, but you got me, right? How are you, how are you, how are you making it more about you, okay, when we were both t together, and now I'm, you, how dare you? Well, how dare you? Well, I don't know, how dare you? 
We'd be here all night. So the king is like, I could say, because I'm the king. I could say, how dare you, because I'm the king. But they're like, I don't need to give you an answer because you're not the king. So, so he, you know, messed me up because I was like, and he was trying to be cute about it because in 14 he says, is it true? Oh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Because, you know, they like all together. They like their own crew, you know, there's three of them. And I, you know, and I, I can't, you know, because I was thinking if I was a king, which I'll never be, but I am a queen, hallelujah. But I, I was, you know, my husband and I were talking about certain queens and royalty, and we kind of figured this is some queens that would be beheaded, right, honey? Uh -huh. We know, you know, we just know them queens. I was like, but I don't want to be a queen that's beheaded. I want to be a queen that can be an example and be able to testify and just give to other people, you know what I'm saying? So I might have said, too, I might have said, is it true? Mm -hmm. Oh, shit, right, Misha, Bendigo. Is it true? I mean, I might have had that drama too, but at the same time, I probably wouldn't even be in a situation like that because when I already know something, I'm not going to set you up to fail. I'm going to set you up to pass. Amen? So I'm not going to say, is it true? I already know it's true. Everybody bowing down but you. So I just might say, what's up with you not bowing down? But that's just the reality of it. That's all. So now in verse 15, it says, now if you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, psaltery, the dulcimer, and all the other kinds of music, ye fall down and worship the image which I have made. Well, and that well is like, you know, if you really wasn't a sinner. But then we'll keep going. Well, if I say well, 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 but if ye worship not, ye shall be cast the same hour into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. And who is that God that you shall, you know, that shall deliver you out of my hands? Now see, this is rude. See, who is that God is like saying, excuse me, who is that God is like saying, how dare you? Mm -hmm. I mean, to me, they got this the same language. Because you're still questioning who I am as the person. You're not trying to figure out the person. So it's really just about your little graven image. It ain't really about, you know, we're trying to do this thing together. So I, I'm like, you know, I, you know, you know, because I, I, I got my pictures in my head. You know, he thought he was omnipotent. Yeah. He, he, the king really thought he was king. Don't get me wrong, that's how they did it in them days. But even Obama gotta be checked sometimes, you know what I'm saying? You just can't call Kanye names, especially the Kanye fans, you know what I'm saying? And on public TV, you gotta watch it. And you got other issues going on. So it's like, <laughs> he does, he does. So I'm not trying to jack anybody. How many Obama fans we got, tell the truth? Wow, it's like empty up in here. You know, I'm gonna tell you now. You know, we, I didn't think we were going to have a brother for a president, so stone me. But the truth is, he, you know, <laughs> go, girl. I'm trying to get there, brother. I'm trying to go. So, you know, Nebuchadnezzar thought he was, a, you know, he was all powerful. And, and the truth was, you know, you got to bless, honor, and authority. I ain't trying to mess up. I got to go home. Cool. I'm trying to say this. God help me, okay? <laughs> the king had all power, all right? And he thought he was omnipotent when he was questioning these three Hebrew boys as God, okay? Right? But you lost your power when three boys didn't bow down to your graven image. So here's the deal. It could happen. You, you could lose your stuff, okay? And you, and you can lose your stuff because you still got to stand and be strong and fearless against your defense for your faith because they're coming at you about your faith. So I may have to go do some things. And I may have to become a victim of some things because I'm not going to bow down to your junk. I'm not going to bow down to your lies. I'm not going to bow down to your deceit. I'm not going to bow to your distrust. You ain't going to keep jacking me in your thought process against me, and I'm trying to stand firm with my God. Come on, somebody. So he, he's like, yo, not cool. And I got a firmness set up for people like you. See, I, gotta, I still got to be king because whether you agree with me or not, you still got to show up and act like you do. And that's what we do sometimes. Sometimes we just, I know, right? No, you don't. <laughs> Girl, I agree, but no, you don't. Sometimes we put ourselves in predicaments 
just so we can get along. Yeah. But the truth is, we're all alone because we're not getting along. So he's kind of cool in a way because he's trying to check them and be like, let's be straight up real. But the truth was, he had no clue. See, when you try to defend your faith against someone who knows nothing about your Lord and Savior, you shouldn't get so defensive. Yeah. Yeah. This is your opportunity, the opportunity, to teach them about your God. Right. Right. But if you're going to get so upset because they offended your God, you can't teach them and reach out to them to bring them into your God. So God's looking at us like, you don't know what to do with the faith I've given you because your example is not showing who I am. We got to testify. Praise God. Verse 16 goes on and it reads, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, three Hebrew boys, answered and said to the king, Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we were not careful to answer thee in this matter. Basically, we don't need to respond to you because you're not the one we have to answer to in the first place. Now, that would look really bad in a public forum, amen? <laughs> but when you think about who you really got to answer to at the end of the day and the beginning of your morning, you're not really concerned about what other people say, think, feel, how they look at you. You're not concerned with that. Because you got a God that you got to answer to that's way bigger than any king will ever be, amen? And so, you know, they're like, you know, we don't need to concern ourselves with an answer to you because we've got someone bigger to answer to. 17 says, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hand. Okay. They're like, if I got to say anything, I'm going to tell you what he is more than capable and able to do. Yeah. I don't have to tell you why I didn't bow down. I didn't have to tell you I'm so sorry that I didn't do what I thought to, but I forgot. I don't have to tell you I wanted to, but my two friends told me not to. I ain't got to go through none of them changes. I don't even have to answer to you. But here's the deal. When I do speak, I am going to testify oh, yeah. about the goodness of my God. Amen. Draw me closer to my faith. Amen. Give it to somebody. Come on. Give it, give it up. Amen. Because they're not going to heal you, they're not going to deliver you, they're not going to bring you through, they're not going to encourage you, they're not going to grow you, they're not going to strengthen you. All I need to give you is the truth of the word of God. Live and walk in that truth. Be an example, and when he shows himself to me regularly, all I have to do is testify to the goodness of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So 17 is done, but 18 says, but if not, be it, uh, be it known unto thee, O king. That we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. 19 says, then was Nebuchadnezzar. He was like, ha! He was full of fury. He was his own fiery furnace. And the form of his, this is a change against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. See, here's the thing. They were really good because they were doing everything he wanted. And then when they decided to not do what, no. And when he decided to do what God wanted, he didn't have anything for him anymore. So now he's upset. And so he continues and he goes, therefore he spake and commanded that they each should, that they should heat the furnace one seven times more than it was um, to be heated. So, you know, I, you know, but I praise God for numbers. See, you know, listen, I'm a heat girl. I love the career. I love the heat. Winter don't do well for me. So if I'm in the Caribbean and it's 82 degrees and you want to make it hotter than that, it's just going to put me in the, on, a, on a beach more. I mean, it's not going to mess me up. I'm so sorry. It's not, oh, it's hotter? Okay, I'm going to go out there and stay out there longer. I'll come out a razor, but I'm going to love myself. I mean, I'm just a warm girl. So, you know, the fact that you put it up seven times more is really not a trip to me because if you know anything about God, seven is perfection. So all that you did was purify me, get it off me, clean me up. I'm just good about hanging out in the furnace. I'm not even worried about that. See, the truth of the matter is, before I went in, I was just somebody that you thought was disobedient. Now that I've gone in because I'm going with the glory of the Lord upon me, I'm coming out better than when I went in. Amen. You're not messing Amen. me up. But you shall see. 
you shall see. So I'm like, you know, this is really powerful because the fact that he's so hot that he wants to make it hotter just to punish him doesn't make any sense. And that's what we do sometimes. When people are coming against us about our faith and our belief, we have to come strong and walk the work. See, I think it like this. If I keep shoving the word down your throat, you'll eventually choke on it. Some you'll swallow, and then you'll regurgitate it on someone else. And they'll get the word all over them, and then they'll be saved. That ain't balance. So that can't work. So what I need to do is not shove Jesus down your throat. Amen. I just have to shove my love upon you. I have to be testimony, and I have to be an example. Amen? But let's skip, if we may, to verse 24. If you're there, say the king. Verse 24 says, But Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished. And rose up in haste and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? Now, you know, he knows everything because he's the king. But something's happening before his eyes and now he needs counselors. It's like you were so set in your place and you knew who you were and you knew what you were doing. And now there's something bigger than you. I didn't say better, but I could. Bigger than you comes along and now you need like an entourage of just hope and you know, encouragement, and you need like people in your corner. You was king, you had it all set up, but now you see more than what you anticipated. So he's like, into the midst of the fire, they answered and said to the king, true, O king. <laughs> they didn't even want to say, yeah, what was that? <laughs> they didn't want to say, yeah, what happened? Because see, now if they would say, this, if they would have said, yeah, what happened, that means they would have to ask the king a question and say, and yeah, what happened? And then he would have to give them an answer. We all know he don't know the answer. So what they did in their humble positions, they just said, true, O king, yeah, we see it too. We ain't going to say nothing because I'm telling you, there's a God in this house that's going to mess with you, and we want to stand over here far away from you as possible. <laughs> But God ain't going to miss, amen? Verse 25 says, He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, which is the intention of what the king wanted in the first place. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. I'm like, you, you got to, you know, you, you put him in the attention to hurt them. You put three in, you see four, and, and nobody's hurt. Now, you know... I'm not a genius, although I play one on TV. But if you if you if you see what you saw, wouldn't you open up the gate? I've been trying to get restitution as fast as I could. I'd be like, wait a minute. I know I put three men in, and I know you know that the fire is supposed to burn them up. They're not burning up, and now there's four of them. I might blink, and it might be eight. Then what do I do? I mean, it can get, just can get bigger and bigger. What do I do with that? I would have opened up the gate. But you know, sometimes we get funny in our spots. So. 26 says, then Nebuchadnezzar came near the mouth of the fiery furnace. See, this is a trip because this is the coward's king because he's watching them burn from over here. Thanks, CJ. So, you know, he's seeing it from here. But now he's kind of figuring it out. So he comes a little bit closer. Because not so much because he can't be bothered by the fire. He just don't want to get his cloth tight because the heat will make your stuff nappy. Mm. I know. So then Nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning fiery furnace and spake and said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, you servants of the Most High God, come forth, come hither. Now, I'm going to be straight up with y'all. Well, what do you expect? If he said that to me, I would have been like this. Watch me, I'm not <laughs> Or I might have said, I hear you, but I'll get there when I get there. You put me in here for a reason, what's up? Text me. I mean, I might have did that because, you know, he's like, he's the one that has to get what he needs now. I don't need to get I've been hanging out here for however long you put me in here. You don't put me up seven times hotter and nothing happened to me. Here's the deal. I got God. I don't need you to come running to help me out now. You blew your chance. I'm going to stand with what I know about the God that I serve. Come on, somebody. When you stand Nothing can come against you. You can drink poison and still go, you know what? I shouldn't have did that, but that's all right. God's got me. Because my faith is going to let me stand that I can depend on the God that I serve. Hallelujah. 
Ooh, child. So, 27, and the princes, governors, and captains, and the king's council, all these counselors, they, you know, they gathered together, saw these men upon these, those bodies, the fire, with, you know, they had no power, nor was a hair on their head singed. Now, some of us know what singe means. Some of us play like we don't. <laughs> But I know singed, okay? That's why it's tied up tonight. Think about it. You in this hot fiery furnace? I, you, you can't go across the street in Vegas heat in the, in the prime of the day. And don't feel like a sweat box. So, you know, hair is not even singed. Neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of fire had passed. So let me tell you something. There'll be a time in your faith. Well, God will have you in such a valley that you'll be going through so much, you'll be smelling like smoke. Because that's the hell that the devil tried to put you in. But praise God for your faith that you can depend on, lean on, believe in, and, be, and have a concern in your life that no matter what you smell like, you're still going to be a rose. Amen. Come on, somebody. So, you know, it's like, now everybody's a believer. Now everybody's a believer. Their faith was tested, yeah. But here's your testimony. Nothing can kill you when you're serving the Almighty God. Amen. Nothing. So in verse 28, it continues. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they may not serve nor worship any God except their own. Hallelujah. When you depend on your faith, when you defend your faith, you honor your God. And when you do it with his grace, and you do it with example and testimony, you're in a good place. Because one thing we don't want to do is embarrass God by calling ourselves Christians and acting otherwise just to defend our faith. That's not faith. That's foolishness. We have to get to that point. And when we defend our faith, we need to use our strength, our wisdom, and our humility. Jesus could have ran around real quick and said, hold up everybody, I'm Jesus. Never once did he need to raise his voice. If you ain't turning over a table, you need to just chill out with your faith. Speak strongly to the person that's an unbeliever because that's how they'll hear you. And the people that want to come against your faith, your family, your family, the word of God says it in Luke, your family's going to come against you, your mama's going to be against the daughter, daughter's going to be against the mama, father against son. That whole thing has happened, even now. The Lord that I got saved you. You have your testimony of your salvation. Don't let some other religion come in and sneak in and do little snippets from other parts of the Bible trying to convince you what's not so. The bottom line is no matter how much you read, no matter how much you write, no matter how much you minister, no matter how much you give, if you don't know that Jesus died on the cross for you, you're a hot mess. It don't matter what you know. Your knowledge is only going to be limited. Because when you get to the gate, and praise God, you get through the gate, that's going to be your only concern. Am I in? Am I in? And you're going to be hoping you don't smell nothing fiery. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Expect God to defend what you, you know, your, to, to defend you. Because once you see how God defends you, you can depend on the thing that you have in you have faith that you can have in him. Amen? The only reason why you got that faith is because he's faithful. Praise, praise the Lord. Give God a hand praise, please. But here's, here's what I want to conclude with. God, you, God is really good. Like sometimes I get upset because I can't come up with better words. But he's all that. He's all that. 29 says, therefore, I make a decree that every people, nation, and language which speak anything amiss against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego shall be cut in pieces. Then you go threaten the people again. Shall be cut in pieces, and their houses shall be made of dung. Because there is no other God that can deliver after this sort. Come on, somebody. The, the king promoted Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the province of Babylon. Now, now praise God for the promotion. Thank you. 
But y'all know where promotion comes from. Let's stop playing. It's great that people get promoted. I am so I am so upward bound for being upward bound. But you know, when we're Christians and we're fighting this fight of faith together, we've got friends, not foes. Come on. You know, we're, we're supposed to be in it together. We don't have conspirators, okay? We don't have co-conspirators. We're supposed to do this together. So here's the blessing. He's like, I want to be like you. Because see, when they were in that fiery furnace, they weren't shouting down the name of Jesus. They were just patient in their faith. Now, I'm not saying you shouldn't have a shout. Don't misunderstand. What I'm saying is there's a time and a place for everything concerning your faith and your God. And when we use his discretion, when the Holy Spirit leads us correctly because we're listening and learning from him, taking correct direction, we're going to be all right. Because you see, if they would have been doing this or doing that, he would have said, well, that's what they do. But to just sit and stand or even just lay in the fire, come on, that's more testimony than anything. They're not even shaking, saying, get me out. They're not even saying, how long, Lord, how long? They're just going to chill out Hallelujah. and wait for God to be God. Amen? Amen? So, you know, sometimes you say to yourself, like, you know, I, I know I have to have this faith. I don't know how to always defend faith when I don't know if I can depend on my faith. Well, first of all, it's not your faith that you can depend on. And sometimes when we get to those low places in our faith, we have to reintroduce ourselves to God. Amen. We might have to repent. We might have to ask, what is it that I need to do? You know, you might have to ask him to search you while you check yourself. Because we quick when it comes to, you know, checking each other. But sometimes we got to check ourselves. Amen? And we have to ask ourselves, am, am I defendable? Am I dependable? We go through those changes, and that's why we need each other. Amen? Amen. But you got to be like David. You know, David was really good in the fact that he was going to go after that giant. And, you know, he was like, I can't wear your armor because I have an assailant. Mm -hmm. And sometimes what you have to do is you have to assail your faith because you have to examine and test it. Yes. If it ain't tested, if it ain't tried, it may not be true. Because somebody telling you that you're a Christian because somebody else told you that you're a Christian ain't going to cut it. I had one of my youth tell me, I said, how do you know you're saved? She said, because Minister Frank told me. And that worked because he hasn't been with us for a lot of years. So she held on to that. But she still needs to have her own. She's got to have her own. So tonight, you got to get your own. Amen? Amen. I want to close with this. God is so good. He is. You know, God will defend us if we depend on him. And when we depend on him, that grows our faith. We all got fiery furnaces in our life, all of us. Whether it's our job, our kids, our kids' kids, our spouses, our workplaces, our church, our ministry, we all got a fiery furnace to face. But it's our faith that's gonna carry us through. Because when we believe and trust in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we don't know what he's gonna do. We don't know what he's gonna do on our way home. We just gotta know he's gonna get, there, get us there safely, amen? amen? And that's what we go from. So, with saying that, you have to realize that you're not the only one that has a faith defense. That's what she needed faith before she went before the king. Job, you need to faith not to slap his wife's mouth for saying, curse God and die. I mean, that took a lot. You know what I'm saying? Daniel, he had to deal with the lion. But tonight, we all have something. Look at your name and say, I don't know what you got. But I hope I can help you build your faith. So let's stand on our feet tonight, please. We're just going to stand. Give God a hand right there. size faith. And I've said this before, if we don't activate that small seed, it's senseless. But how many of you tonight just knew in your faith pocket that you could truly depend on what God has said? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There's not
not an unfamiliar face to me tonight, but of course, if you don't know the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, now's the time because you won't be able to defend your faith, let alone build your faith if you don't know Jesus. So, if you know Jesus, tell your neighbor, I'm saved. I'm saved. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you're not sure that you're saved, we can fix that straight up right now, amen? We can have someone pray for you. We can continue with our service. We can believe and agree, amen? And we can go on with our life and be happy for you, amen? Celebrate you, amen? But tonight we're really going with defending, fighting, coming together, being united in our faith. Amen? Because we need each other. So if there's anyone here tonight that feels in their spirit that they get weak in their faith, come to the altar. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Now for everyone that doesn't battle like this, I need two strong men in the faith and four strong women in the faith to encourage and help build and unite these four women. Come to the altar. Come on. It's you. Praise the Lord. 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 We can blanket prayer as much as we want. But the important thing is, we have to remember we truly need each other. So since you're strong in your faith, and you're strong in your faith, turn to the person that's next to you and encourage them in the faith. Praise God. Hallelujah.